Hi, this is Bob, and I'm uh, working on a uh, 10 Tech Omni 6 Plus. This is a model 564, and I, uh, I've never worked on a 10 Tech before. Some things I noticed about this the connectors. These use little snap-in connectors. Uh, the wires are just pushed down into a tight-fitting little V that cuts through the insulation. I really don't like that. I like to see the pins crimped on or soldered on is better yet. But this thing is loaded with these little connectors. They seem to be working so far so I'll let that go. But uh, I would prefer to see soldered wires. Another thing I noticed is all the wires are the same color. Now this is a little cable here that came out of uh, an old Heathkit SS9000. I've got uh, a uh, one that's completely gutted but it had a few of these cables and things in it. So I took these out and uh, this little cable here I put a different plug on. You'll notice it has uh, it has four wires or five wires there but we only need uh, we only need three. So uh, anyhow what I did was I took this plate off. It, this was down here and covers up the PL board and the oscillator board. This has got all the crystal oscillators in for the different bands here. But the problem was in the PL board. I think I pretty much got it uh, narrowed down and it was quite a job. I used uh, free, freeze mist. I don't know if you've used freeze mist or not. Pardon my camera being bouncing around a lot, but it's a handheld camera. And uh, yeah, this is the freeze mist I'm using. And I got this. Uh, I got this on the internet. But I was told. I was told the other day that. This stuff is the same thing. Electronics duster, and I got this at the dollar store for a buck. Now I paid twenty dollars for that big bottle of free spray, and then I had to pay shipping to get it here. So I've probably got twenty-five dollars at least in that big bottle of free spray. Now the way you use this, you can use it just as is and spray just the air blast. Or it's not air blast, it's, um, it's, it's a type of Freon in here. And you can just spray the cold Freon just like it's designed like that. They give you a little little tube you can put in there. Now, of course you would want to use the tube and then you put it right up next to your part that you want to cool and spray it. But if you want to get the same liquid out like they do on the freeze spray bottle, the big one, it's easy. You just turn it over and the liquid comes out. So you don't get near as much of the liquid in the little can here, but I'd say there's eh, two or three ounces in there enough to do a job anyways. So I was using the freeze spray and I was spraying it on these components and this thing would cut out and I spray the freeze spray and I finally found out that spraying it around these little transformers. Now this is a filter. This is part of the PLL loop and this is a filter. These three transformers couple one to the other to the other but uh, anyhow, this thing cut out. It would run a while and it would just quit. And I got in here and I started wiggling these little transformers. Now I wiggled everything else first, believe me. I used a plastic tool. I have wiggled every part in this thing. I also used the paintbrush trick. Trying to find something that was really, really loose and it would cut out using the paintbrush. That didn't work. 
So then I got in here with my fingers and I started really moving things around. Now that was with the board in the unit operating with these extension cables on so I can get at it while it's working. Anyhow, uh, the last thing I did was I tried wiggling these transformers just like that, much harder than that. Pretty firm I was on them because this board was fastened down in there with four screws. And it cut out. And then I took them and I squeezed them like that and it started working again. And I wiggled them some more and it cut out again. So my problem is in these little transformers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that over and re-solder the connections under those transformers just on the off chance that uh, one of these connections is intermittent. I have had connections on circuit boards before where the little wire comes up, goes through the board, it's underneath the solder. It looks like it's soldered really good, but the solder covers that uh, little pin or wire and it's got a coating of uh, corrosion on it, on that little pin or wire, and the solder did not adhere to it, at least not good enough. So I've had connections that look perfect, and yet they were not. So I'm going to re-solder those. Another thing I have already done is I replaced two of the, uh, of the Veractor diodes that go in here. This is the PLL, this is the VCO oscillator, voltage controlled oscillator here. And I have had those little Veractor diodes or very cap diodes fail. And the, the believe it or not, they're still in there. Here's the ends of them right here, one there and one there. I just pulled one side of them out of the board. I had these MV107 very cap diodes which I thought were probably about the same value but they're larger size they're very hard to get in there so I just soldered them on the bottom of the board and I pulled one end of the other two out on top of the board and they're still in there but they aren't going to hurt anything and uh, anyhow after doing that uh, and squeezing on these a few times the thing is working but it does cut out after a while so like I say, I'm going to re-solder this area right in here with my little tiny soldering iron and some very, very small solder and some 6040 flux uh, solder. 6040 solder with a rosin flux in it. And uh, it, I, I'm thinking right now that uh, of an experience I had just the other day. I went soldering on a circuit board and I had grabbed a roll of 4060 solder, which is almost 100 degrees higher melting temperature. <laughs> I, I started soldering and I thought, things are not going very well here. What's wrong? Well, I finally found out that I was using the wrong solder. You want 6040 solder for electronics work. It melts at a lower temperature. So uh, less chance of doing damage to the board or something. Anyway, that's what I've got to do there is uh, take care of that. Now, after I get that resoldered, I'm going to clean the whole board with alcohol. And then I think I'm going to heat it up and, uh, and uh, bake it for a while to make sure there is no moisture in that board. This uh, PLL chip here, which is right here, this guy is very sensitive to uh, moisture between the pins and things like that. It's got an output uh, connector right here, and I was measuring that. I just pulled the cable out and, and measured it at the other end of the cable because I can get my, my scope uh, probe to clip right on there. And I was measuring the output with the scope and watching it cut out. And uh, I found that uh, when I touched the scope probe onto that uh, end of that cable, and I had it on R times 1, it would cause this PLL oscillator to quit. So the PLL oscillator, phase locked loop oscillator in here, is very sensitive to a little capacity on the output pin, which is pin 19 on this in the 10 tech. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing with that, like I say, is I'm going to clean the whole ball board with uh, alcohol top and bottom and uh, let it dry and then I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to put it in the oven at 150 degrees for a couple of hours to be sure I've got all the moisture out of it because that is loading loading down this uh, PLL uh, phase lock chip right here. That's it guys. So this is, uh, this is part one here of uh, working on the 10 Tech Omni 6 Plus. 73's and good DX.